First of all, thanks to Expansive Worlds for giving us a chance to try the Zambusher pack a few days before its official release. Alright guys, on this video we'll be testing out the new weapons for the first time on Early Access, although on this occasion I'ma put a special emphasis on both the new Ray Curve and the new Electronic Color. As you can see right now we're on a tree stand on Missy Piakers because I wanna hunt some characters using this Ray Curve and what a better way to do so than from a tree stand taking advantage of the fact that now we can call in the characters using the new Electronic Color. You know, apart from being able to attract pretty much every single callable species in the game, a huge advantage this Electronic Color has is that it also gives you the option to attract the American Gator, which is amazing. So I'ma activate the baby call here. And I would expect to see some of them approaching the color very soon. Now the main difference between this new color and the normal colors is that instead of going directly to a hunter, the animals will now go directly to a position where you place the electronic color, which is a huge advantage when hunting from tristans or tripods. Oh, look. Hey, level 2 female, that's the first gator of the hunt. She is 40 meters out, which is already inside the record range, but since she's still inside the water, we'll have to wait to shoot her. And now she's about 20 meters out. As you can see, she's heading directly to a caller, which is exactly what I expected to see. So as soon as she gives us a broadside angle, I'ma go for the shot. You know, this is gonna be our first kill using this new record. Which, by the way, gives you the option to mount any of the bow sides. I mean, you can mount the 5 pin, the 3 pin, even the high tech side. But as you can see on this occasion, we're using it without any side, which is, of course, a lot more challenging. We actually have to aim in between those two blades. And that will do it. I assume it was a hard shot. Oh. Aggressive. First time we get attacked by a gator today, although he's already fleeing since we're on a tree stand. And there's another male over there, a level 6. Now I wonder if that one is actually approaching the caller because he doesn't seem to, but he may start getting closer soon. And yeah, he's walking this way now, directly to a caller. I'ma shoot this guy as well as soon as he stops, roughly 20 meters out. Not the best angle, but that should be a viral. Yeah, in fact, there's some viral blood there, so that is a good sign. Although a second shot wouldn't hurt. Let's see. And we hit him, but I'm honestly not sure if that was good. Oh, no way, we actually got a viral. Man, that was a decent shot, not gonna lie. And there's a mythical there as well. Which I assume is coming in. Yeah, he's definitely getting closer, but he's attentive since the wind is not great. And the other bull is dead. Now the mythical is unfortunately alert already, and he probably won't reach the shore since the wind is terrible and he's gonna spoke way before. So I guess we're gonna switch over to the 44 lever action rifle and I'ma try to hit the brain. Oh, come on. He's booked. So anyway, apparently there's nothing else coming in, and I think it's time to harvest the two gators we shot with the recurve. First of all, we have this level 6, which we hit two times, the first one being a single long, as well as the second one. Oh. Another gator. Hey, female. Was that a viral? Oh, hold up. Hold up. I don't know if it's just me, but that gator look different. Maybe a rare? I mean, if it's a rare, it must be either an albino or a piebald. Well, unfortunately, she's gone already, but it's very likely she'll come back as soon as we reset the time and after we claim this first female, which is the first one we shot. As you can see, it was a nice double long and hard shot, which was a pretty decent shot to be our first one with this new ray curve. And now it's time to go back to Outpost to reset the time and see if the potential rare result shows up again. Oh, look. Is that her? No way. She's a pivot. 
Haitochi was an albino for a moment, but it is one of those piebald variations that look almost completely white. Actually, the piebalds are not nearly as rare as the albinos, but the fact that I've never gotten one with this pattern, and also the fact that it will be our first trophy with this new recurve makes it even more special. Now, for some reason, she hasn't moved from that position in the last couple minutes or so, which is very weird. She's apparently frozen. And I'm honestly not sure of what to do here, since it is not possible to hit the gators while they are inside the water. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'ma leave the tree stand, and let's hope this female attacks us. You know, it will be a matter of luck, but it's very possible she'll go aggressive in a few seconds. Let's see. Oh! Was that good? Man, I really hope we hit a barrel, but I don't see any blood. I mean, there's absolutely no blood. Oh, she's dead! That's it! And there's another gator in the area. Right there. A level 5. Which we didn't hit. But anyway, what matters is that we hit the one that we actually wanted, which is this beautiful piebald. She's our own tenth piebald gator, although the first one we get with this variation. Frankly, it looks amazing, in my opinion, just as cool as an albino. And now, having tested out this new ray curve, the next thing we're gonna do today is to shoot some stuff using the new Moradi Model 1897. Okay, now we're out here on Borjonga Savannah to begin testing the new 44 lever action and compare it with other popular rifles like the Malmer 7mm. So we're gonna start by shooting that well the beast over there, she's exactly at 150 meters. And that should be a double long. 50 to 75 health. 25 to 50, she's going down quickly. And now let's take a look at the quick kill bonus, which I assume will be higher than 80% based on how quickly she died. Alright, nice to belong, and a quick kill bonus of 86.39%, not too bad. As you can see, the shot was taken at exactly 150 meters, and the penetration is honestly amazing for a rifle that also covers class 3. Now it's time for the 7mm, which I expect will have more punch than the 44, but I really doubt it will be better in terms of penetration. I mean, the penetration of the 44 flat nose bullets is 70 if I remember correctly, and the penetration of the 7mm polymer tips is 40. Although, as you could see, the difference in power is quite noticeable, this one took like 2 seconds less to go down. It is undeniable that the 7mm is more powerful than the 44, regardless of the 44 having more penetration, as you can see it was also a double long at 150 meters, and it had a 100% quick kill bonus. So, now that we know that a direct comparison against the 7mm is not the most fair comparison, the next thing we're gonna do is to test it against what I think is the flagship class 4 weight rifle, which is the Sarsa 308. You know, the 308 caliber is a slightly less powerful than the 7mm, so it should be a good comparison against the 44 lever action. I'm gonna shoot at Gamespot using the 44 to see what is the quick kill bonus. And that should be it over long. She is taking a while to die though. Alright, there's another female Gamespot over there, also 150 meters out. So I'm gonna shoot this one using the Sarsa and then we're gonna compare the quick kill bonuses. We'll see which caliber gives us a higher quick kill. And it's also taking a while to go down, so it's hard to tell at a first glance which caliber is more powerful. Alright, first of all, let's harvest the one we shot using the 44. As you can see, it was in fact a double long at 152 meters. And as for the quick kill bonus, a 27.78% only. Not a great percentage, but it's actually not too bad considering that this is a class 8 species and this caliber covers class 3 to 8. 
You know, it may not be as powerful as the Sarsa Trio 8, which in this case also got a double onk and a quick kill bonus of 60.83%, but at the end of the day it was to be expected, and what matters is that the 44 is perfectly capable of dropping any animal within its class range without any issue. I mean, this Moradi model 1887 definitely does a solid job on those bigger animals, but where it really shines is definitely against class 3 to 6, which undoubtedly makes it one of the best options for certain maps like Emerald Coast, where there's a high price of species within that range. 